I mean, it's beyond looking in the eyes. It's just feeling it, <laughs> feeling it to the deepest, to the deepest core. But that's part of it, you know. It's like facing your fear, facing you know, being cracked open, and then coming out the other side and being smothered in the sanctity and beauty of everything as a result. Like you know, going as as deep as you can, facing your greatest fears, and then being okay. It's really part of it. And then, and then the lessons that come from that are infinite, you know, and vary from, I think, individual to individual. Yeah. So here we are on the Weird Music Podcast. I'm Cam and we've got John Medeski here, a, a man who needs no introduction. John is, he's with Saint Disruption. And, and so that's that's what we're here to uh, put a spotlight on today. John, I was just talking with Jeff, your, your counterpart with Saint Disruption for everyone out there listening. And, and he mentioned I should ask you about an improvisational project you two uh, have worked on recently, something about mind and body coherence. Yeah, when we were in North Carolina, we uh, recorded, a, um, I don't know what, it's so hard to know. I'm not a fan of labeling music, you know, and categorizing it. But I guess it falls more into the sort of sound realm of for sound healing-ish type of stuff, I guess people would call it. We just kind of went in just with this, without a whole lot of um, preconceived notions other than we were going to, we were working with this singer who is really amazing and, you know, uh, sort of channels something, you know, and uh, had a couple of percussionists, a bass player. And yeah, it was really kind of amazing. It was uh one long piece that went many, many places and happened very easily. It was beautiful. He mentioned a phrase when telling me, he said, mind, body, coherence. And, and he just kind of glossed over it, but I don't know exactly what he meant by that. Is that, is that the right phrasing? <laughs> sure. Why not? I mean, Jeff is very good with words, man. I don't know. I'm not as good with words as Jeff is. I think that's just the idea. You know, I mean, what, I mean music has certain, music has a lot of functions, I think, you know, I think putting one into a state of mind body coherence is one of the things it can do, you know? And uh, I, you know, the, th the truth is it's different. I'm sure it's, it's different for each person. What kind of music does that for them? You know, in my opinion, you know, I mean, I really think, you know, we talk about styles of music and everything and it's what, for me, what I, I just over the years witnessed is that it's, it's really relative, you know, we can get into maybe, you know, more scientifically, you know, you know, saying this is jazz or this is rock or this is whatever the stylistic parameters are that we want to define. But then there's always the best stuff is always on the edge and bending and you know, the music, you know, the music that moves any of that forward is redefining those things, you know, and the stuff we love and the stuff we end up historically, you know, going back to it over and over is the stuff that's really like, you know, pushing the envelope, breaking the rules, moving forward, you know? So I think it's really hard. And like, you know, something I've learned is like, you know, what, like just say the word, you know, jazz, like what that, that means different, you know, to some people, anything, any music that's instrumental, that doesn't have lyrics, they call it jazz. To other people, it has to be, you know, have a certain rhythm that's indicative of a certain time period in human history, you know, or it has to have certain elements that, you know, certain musical elements, certain stylistic elements that make it jazz, or maybe it just has to be, have a certain spirit, a real, you know, it has to be the spirit of improvisation, the spirit of, you know, making music in the moment. I don't know. It's like different things. So that's, so when we started like labeling music, I just, uh, I dropped out about three, 30 years ago. From there. <laughs> I, you know, I like all, I, like, I just love music. You know? What is the original reason when you look inside yourself that you love music? You know, honestly, it's like, I don't know, because it just kind of happened, you know. <laughs> I mean, I remember as a kid loving music and just, and I, you know, was told certain things I did when certain music came on and I just loved, you know, I always loved music. I think you can see all kids are like that. You know, I think all humans, it's, you know, music is, a, is, is one of our greatest languages, you know. I just started playing when, you know, I started playing classical piano when I was five, just going through that whole routine and just certain things came easily to me and I love a lot of things about it, you know, so it's, it's, it's not, it's not really, but for me, one of the things is, is, is the space that it takes me to when I'm playing it, you know, which I can't really put into words because it's music and it's a, 
you know, it's like we're talking right now. That's one of our languages. Mathematics is a cool language. Music is its own language, you know, and it it talks about itself, you know, and it gets, you know, it's fun to talk about it too, you know, but I'm just saying like really at the end of the day, the music is the language that defines itself and what it does to us, the vibration it creates that the way it melds our mind and emotions and spirit and the place it takes us to is like, you really can't put it into words. You, we just know what it is. You know, those of us who listen to music, I think, you know, you know, growing up where I did, when I did, not you know playing a lot of different styles of music and not having this sort of the weight of like oh you're supposed to do this or that like just play music so i played a lot of different styles i was lucky i didn't have that pressure like if you want to be a classical player you can't do this if you want to be a jazz player you can't do this you know everybody where i you know i grew up in south florida in this you know it's during the 70s it was a you know a cool time it, it was a lot of great musicians a lot of live music and everybody played everything it wasn't like, oh, those are the jazz guys. These are the rock guys. It's the R&B guys. The jazz guys were playing in horn sections and R&B bands. Everybody was playing everything and, and reggae bands. And, you know, it was like, because it was a small pool, so everybody had to do everything, you know. And then some people were playing in big bands at weddings. It was like, you know, or bar mitzvahs. Or, you know, it was all that kind of stuff. Cocktail. You know, they had, there was a lot more live music in general at that time, you know. So for me, I don't have, like, I mean, I just didn't grow up with those was boundaries, you know? So when I moved to the Northeast, New York, Boston, you know, Boston and then New York, you know, you know, suddenly, you know, there's, you know, they, these boundaries became clearer, you know, and we had to like decide what you're doing, what, you know, what kind of music are you playing? For me, it's like, I, it's, it's, it's the original reason of just what the vibration of music is, no matter what kind it is, what it does, what it, what it does for me, how I feel, you know, it's healing, it's, it's uh, inspiring, it's, you know, it's meditative, it's so many things, you know? I recently read a book by Victor Wooten um, called The Music Lesson. Not sure if you're familiar. Um, yeah, I haven't read it. I've heard of it. Yeah, I've seen it. It, it refers to music as a she, as a goddess. Uh, and, and one central theme is that no music can be um, created because it all already exists. I'd love to hear kind of what your schema is in how you view music. Like there are scientists who would say it's, it's a phenomena that's kind of an accident. Uh, and then there's other people like um, who I just mentioned who who would worship music almost like a goddess. Uh, and I'm I'm curious just how you view it. Well, I mean, I guess like I view it as a language, you know, and I view it as a manifestation of the same thing that everything is a manifestation of, you know. So whatever you believe that is, whether you want to call it God, whether you want to call it goddess, whether you want to call it, you know, whatever, the birther of the universe of the cosmos, the great spirit, uh, or the big bang. I don't care. Whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> there is a force out there that is part of in the fabric of everything, you know, that is part of creation. And I see music as just another aspect of that, you know, and it's something that, you know, it's like, you know, birds sing, you know, Animals have their songs, trees communicate. Music is a way of communicating, you know, it's a way. and um, in terms of like, you know, the creative aspect of it, I think, you know, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if it's all, I mean, I guess then you get, you get, you know, we'll get into concepts of time. What is time? Is any, you know, is, is there, uh, you know, so then maybe, yeah, it's all already been created if there, if time is an illusion, right? Because it's already happened, but it did. But then if time's an illusion, it didn't really already happen because that's a time concept anyway. So it's, it's all happening, you know? And so I don't really know, like that whole thing, I don't know, but I do really understand where he's coming from. That like, you know, this whole like ego claim that I'm making the music, you know, is not a hundred percent true. I mean, we are, we're each individually, you know, there's a, there, it's a for me, it's a, it's a line between doing and not doing, you know, when you're creating music, you know, and getting out of the way is really a big part, you know, especially if you're improvising, but even if you're composing, like getting out of the way uh, so that, you know, some form of real true expression can come out that's really coming through you, if not from you, you know, in a way that is unique as you are, as each of us are. Looking at specifically improvisational music, music that's improvised. Yes. Can you talk to me on your perspective about improvisational music versus music that's scripted um, and how music that's unrefined or, or more free um, kind of 
why that is so attractive to you in, in your creative pursuits? There, there is a certain cathartic experience that happens that only improvised music can create. And when I say that, I'm not saying it's the best experience that music can, I'm not, it's not, it's, it's just unique to improvised music that can only happen like, you know, and, and, and the, you know, the thing about it is, is that it requires patience of the listener and the musician, you know, because to, to weed through some stuff that maybe isn't as, <laughs> as exciting, but when something, when something, you know, to me, improvised music is creating is music made in the moment for that moment, you know, and that's where you can get into this question of, well, what are, is are people really improvising or are they just playing something they worked out? You know, I mean, it's like, it's, that's like a wormhole that I'm not going to, well, we could go down it, but I don't want to go down it necessarily with, with right credit at this moment as we're talking about this, because for me, that's what it is. It's like, it's, you know, I look at, at improvisation as spontaneous composition, like really, like you're creating, you're composing, you're creating something in the moment. Like I'm not, it's not like, you know, it's one of the things that was, you know, has been hard for me about this whole like jamming, using the word jamming, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's done, you know, it's, 25 years now of this word being associated with a certain kind of music because to me it implies that it'll, you know, but you know, it's also, I understand it's fine, but it, I had a problem in the beginning because it just sort of, to me, it implied this sort of um, mindless, like just whatever, noodling, playing, you know, and, and for me, that's not what improvising is. It is spontaneously composing and it make creating something new in that moment for that moment that is from that moment, you know, and I just, it's something that I, I don't know why. I just, it's something I've liked to do. I think the first time I had sort of an out of body experience improvising, I was probably like 12 or 13. I remember, I kind of remember it very well, or four, maybe 14, 13, 14. And I was playing with this uh, drummer and bass player, you know, and friend, friends of mine. And I don't know what happened. I just, just, I just went into this space and it just, I love the way it felt. So <laughs> that's why I keep, so I just, that sort of has been my exploration, but through that exploration is, you know, is also the exploration of form, structure, chords, theory, you know, rhythm, you know, composition in order to bring that into, to bring those sensibilities to have, you know, to have that information available when I'm improvising, you know, as options. And like, you know, you mentioned the word free music. I believe something that this great drummer, Bob Galati, once said is free music means free to play anything you want. It doesn't mean just playing out there in aleatoric, which I love that, you know, <laughs> playing sonically and like, you know, it's abstract in a way that you can't grasp what's happening. I mean, I love that. You know, I love to listen to that kind of music too. And I can't, I can't tell what's going on. Some people hate that. Some people want to hear a song that they've heard before. That gives them that comfort. That gives them that music thing that, you know, for me, I get the music thing when it's like, when I can't figure out what's happening, you know, when I can't latch on, you know, it's like, you know, being on a roller coaster or, you know, being tossed around by a wave or something. So, but that's me. And so I guess that's what I like. So that's what I try, like to do. And I like the feeling it gives me. And I, and I also, you can feel it with, when the, you know, when there's an audience there that is looking for that too, and it all comes together, there is a certain cathartic experience that just doesn't happen any other way. You know, and I think that's what I love about improvised music. Again, like I'm saying, that's not to take away from a great song. I mean, I saw Ray Charles a bunch of times, and every time he sang "Just for a Thrill," it would make me cry. You know, I heard him do it before, listened to the recordings of, but, you know, and he didn't do it that differently every time. But it got me. You know, and same with certain, you know, great classical, certain with great rock song, or great anything that you know, there is something to it. I'm not one of those guys that belittles that music. I mean, I love it. There's, you know, there's, there is something to that, taking the time to create a composition in a form that is awesome. And then you do it over and over again. And, the, and then the trick is like with doing a Broadway show or a play or classical music or, you know, playing a rock band that plays the same set every night, you know, is how do you give, how, how do you use that form that's the same every time to, to create, to bring new life into it? you know, to get to that place that we're all looking to get to, mm. which, you know, it's hard to put into words what, what that is, but that's kind of, to me, also part of what music's about is to get to, to get to a certain place, you know. Amen. Amen. John, looking at yourself kind of from a third person perspective, what do you think it is about your playing that has led to a lot of people, a lot of 
other professional musicians considering you to be like one of their favorites? Oh my God. I have no idea. I'll try. Let me, let me try to do that. No, nope, I can't do that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what's wrong with these people? That would be my question. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. You know, I, mean, I, I definitely sort of dedicated myself to a certain thing, you know, I mean, I don't know. You know, hopefully, hopefully it's that it makes them enjoy music. If anything, I do can inspire people to somehow participate in music, to dance or to want to play music or to be like, oh, I can do that. I want to do that. That's that's the best for me, because I, like for me, like really, that's, music is not like a spectator sport. You know, although I understand the nature of one aspect of going to I mean, I've because I've had the experience myself in the audience. You are with that person and you do go there. And it is collective like that. And I appreciate that, you know, and I appreciate it, you know, an audience that listens like that, you know, and is ready to go on the journey that I, you know, that I'm, you know, what's hard is when people don't want to go on and they want to tell you what to play, you know, do this, do that, play this song, play that, you know, it's just like, ah, you know, that's another story. But, um, so I'm hoping like for me, that's the, if anyone can be inspired to like want to do it, to want to create music, to, to, you know, or to open the doors to listening to other kinds of music that can just open their whatever it is that that particular music opens that's like to me the best that's like that you know that's the whole point you know especially to get other people to like you know start playing singing doing so for themselves you know. john you played on, on some of the biggest stages you know in front of thousands of people alongside yeah. legendary musicians these, these are like rock star dreams I'm, i want to ask you what achievement and success has taught you about life and and really what matters everyone that's the thing that i think is like you know having having a f- family you know <laughs> outside of music you know that's what really you know having a, having a wife and a daughter and a and, and a home place you know a garden like that i think if anything you know tapping into you know living in the woods for me you know that really i think you know provides the most value about it in terms of life you know what that's about and then you know it really puts perspective on music too you know because you know, i have been i've been really lucky i've gotten to play with some amazing <laughs> you know amazing musicians you know a lot in the past five years six years i mean pre-plague but um you know it was like i was mainly doing my own thing for many years with you know Medesky Martin wood and a few other little things you know that's kind of what i want to do really is i want to do my own music but i've got there's so many people that i never dreamed i would get to play with <laughs> I've been like, hey, I haven't been able to say no. So I've been doing all this other work, you know, in recent years to you know, play with these incredible musicians, play this incredible music, learn learn music I didn't really, that I've always knew about or appreciated, but never learned, you know? And so, yeah, that's, that part's been amazing. Bringing this back a little bit to Saint Disruption, talked with uh, our friend Firewalker quite a bit about um, sacred plant medicines. And for all you out there listening, there's another interview um, with Jeff Firewalker, you also check out, but John, I want to, I want to talk about this with you. I want to talk about the adventures you've had in, in South America. I just read a book called the teachings of Don Juan, uh, written by Carlos Castaneda. Yep. You, are you, are familiar? Yeah, of course. So Jeff and I spoke about this. Um, one of the central themes for everyone listening is the seen world and the unseen world. And, there's a shaman named Don Juan who um, shows Carlos Castaneda uh, via plant medicine teachers um, the nature of reality. I've never been to a South American jungle and, and tried ayahuasca or anything like that. But, you know, with you, music is invisible. And, and that's something you've devoted your life to. And now talking about the unseen world and spirits or um whatever one might encounter on on a psychedelic journey like that i'm curious to know about your schema of the unseen world and really how you view it and what you've learned from from those experiences if you could kind of somehow condense an answer to that (laughs) well i mean it's it's i guess it's it's unseen but it's right there all the time you know and I think when you go down there and get to work in that way, you just, you know, these teachers just kind of just like a radio station tune your brain to be able to see these things, 
and understand them and feel them, you know, and remember. It's more of a remembering than anything for me, you know, remembering what it is to be human, remembering what it is to be part of this whole thing. And um, which really, you know, is, is very inspiring for music. But that's it, really. It's like, I mean, it's just like, it's just, it's, it's all right there. It's just whether or not you, you know, you can see it, feel it, want it, want to see it, feel it, want to admit it's there or not. And it's not, you know, not everyone is ready for that or wants to do that. And that's fine too. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, you know, it's a deep thing. And it's, I think it's a very personal thing. And it's, uh, yeah, I think it's important right now, you know, especially right now. Could you speak at all about looking your fear in the eyes in experiences like we're talking about? I mean, it's beyond looking in the eyes. It's just feeling it, <laughs> feeling it to the deepest, to the deepest core. But that's part of it, you know, it's like facing your fear, facing, you know, being cracked open. And then coming out the other side and being, and then, re, you know, d- d- being smothered in the sanctity and beauty of everything as a result, you know. Like, you know, going as as deep as you can, facing your greatest fears and then being okay is really part of it. And then, and then the lessons that come from that are infinite, you know, and vary from, I think, individual to individual. Yeah. So bringing this back to, uh, to music, do you, do you ever get into creative ruts? I think a rut becomes a rut when you become aware of it and start to freak out about it. You know what I mean? Cause it's not a rut. If it's just, if you, you know, if you have a moment of a little, you know, if you have, if you realize that sometimes you're just more inspired, sometimes you're more on, sometimes you're more tapped in than others. Then it's like the times you're not as tapped in doesn't, it doesn't have to be a rut. You know, it's like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what, like I say, you know, something like, I guess like astrology or something like that, where, you know, there's, you know, if you believe in that stuff, there's like, you know, retrogrades and all this shit and you're supposed to, you know, it doesn't mean that all it means is is all you need to just be aware of what's happening. And if you're aware of what's happening, you can work with it and do something positive with it. So if you're aware of just like the nature of what's going on. So if you are in a rut, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I have, I mean, I have times when I suck. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I've had, and I have moments where I'm, you know, nights where I'm just saying, it doesn't, I'm not, I know it's not, it's on, but like, if you, you know, if you just like that, but again, that's like, that's your ego. That's like, you know, it's like you're saying what Victor Wooten said. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, then you think you're doing it, you know, and if you think you're doing it, you're going to, the rut is going to be painful and the rut's going to get deeper and it's going to get worse. Whereas, like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, I guess, I guess, you know, being an improviser, it's, or, or, you know, whatever, working on improvisation, having that be the big thing, you, you know, you learn how to how let go of a wrong note, because if you play a note that wasn't what you meant or really sounds wrong to you or, or weird or not, you know, not right, and you're thinking about it, it's gonna trip. It's gonna trip you up all along the way. If you, but if you just let it go, you can get right back in the. You know, it's like anything. If you're if you're running down a hill and you get a little off balance, if you f- move into that off balance, you're gonna fall over and tumble down. Whereas if you just whoa, you know, get back on your, you know, stay up and just keep running, you can get back into your groove. You know, and it's the same thing with music. It's the same like in a bigger picture, which is like where a rut would come in. Where, and I think also if you you know you need to know what you need to do in your daily life to keep yourself, you know, inspired or keep yourself uh, in that vibration that you need to create. And I mean, for some people, and again, this is like, a, it's just so many different ways for some people. It's maybe it's the same thing, a routine, the daily routine to get up and, you know, I know, you know, musicians like they get up in the morning, they compose every day from seven thirty to whatever, but, or maybe like, it's really something different every day. You know, like I know with when I was on when we were on the road with MW, it was really different every night. What we needed to do, we like we wanted to be in a space where we could walk on stage and just play and not have a set list and like you know, tap in and you know, come make stuff up, you know, go to songs and all that. And there was not people would ask, like, what do you what, what do you do? Like, what you know, do you guys like, you know? And we don't, it was like really sometimes it was about being quiet, sometimes it was about like 
taking a nap and sleeping until the second we walked on stage. Sometimes it was about going out and having an incredible meal. Often it was about food, but, um, you know, or sometimes it was about like having nobody in the dressing room and just the three of us hanging out, like doing some little rhythmic exercise together. Or sometimes it was about us like not being anywhere near each other and hanging out in three different places then coming on stage. There were, I mean, there's so many different ways to keep it fresh, you know? Um, and I think that's that as an artist, you need to sort of like, know what that is for you. And also at different times of your life, be ready for that to change. You know what I mean? Like maybe like, you know, what worked for you at a certain point isn't what works for you now, you know? And I think that's a problem. That's where I think where rut comes when you are trying to, you know, force something that isn't natural or you're not really being open to the change, you know, within yourself, within, with anything, you know, and, and the ebb and flow of things. So that was a long answer to that. No. <laughs> so going down that, that train of thought at this point in your, you know, piano adventure in your musical adventure, what does growth look like for you? Like what is your, what does practice look like for you? It's so many things, you know, growth is, you know, it is more about spiritual growth right now and perspective and, you know, I, I, I pick up new instruments, usually acoustic instruments, flutes, and, you know, the fuyata and different things. And that is fun, you know, to start to expand, you know, work with different sounds and different instruments as a way to, you know, uh, keep it fresh and keep learning, you know, learning new things. But also I think it's, you know, it's a lot more internal. And, you know, for me, it's like, as a professional musician, a lot for me is like, you know, I have a gig and I got to learn some, <laughs> I got, you know, for me, it's almost my whole life. It's been about practicality. Like, you know, I just have, I take a lot of work and that work gives me things to work on, <laughs> to learn. <laughs> and that keeps me growing, you know? So, and getting to be lucky to play some great musicians. Like, yeah, so I got to learn like whatever this set of music for this gig. That's like, I dig in there and I, that helps me grow. So a lot of my growth over the past, whatever, 10, 20 years has been from just, you know, what I have to do, you know, who I'm playing with, what I'm playing, what's coming up, you know, and there's been so much that it's been nonstop, you know, now with this sort of like lull in the working thing, it's definitely been more internal, you know, and more, um, uh, yeah, spiritual. I mean, the thing is, like, you're gonna grow if you know if you if you stay if you stay alive, you're gonna grow. I mean, come on, you know, more you, <laughs> time on the planet will hope. Well, I guess maybe <laughs> it should. If you you know if you want it to, you can keep growing. You know, John, tell me about Starfire Fellowship. It's a nonprofit, you know, that uh, my wife started here, you know, and it's just, you know, uh, it's just kind of launching right now. And it's about, you know, I guess, you know, indigenous nature based studies, you know, trying, you know, to just broaden, I guess, our connection to whatever the earth and all relations and all that kind of thing, you know, using, you know, Native American, you know, using different things, you know, working with different uh, indigenous uh, teachers, I guess, elders. It's interesting. Like, is there a way people can contribute or get involved? Uh, it's kind of small right now, you know, it hasn't, you know, I mean, when that, when that time comes, it'll I'll definitely be, it's, you know, it's sort of in the formative stages. So, so when that time comes, definitely it will, it'll be clear how to do that. Yeah. We haven't even got the website up. You know, it's like, it's, it's sort of coming together. You know, it's going to involve like workshops. You know, I'm probably going to do some music workshops, sound workshops with it, you know, different kinds of, we had, we had a sidereal astrology workshop that um, happened uh, last year. I mean, it's really just forming and, and, and what it is, is like, it's going it, to, it, it's, it has a life of its own and we're you know, waiting to see what it becomes. <laughs> you know? Right on. Well, John, man, my mind's spinning from, from all of this we're, we've been talking about uh, wrapping up here. Final question. I'm a musician. Musicians listen to this podcast. If you could give us some succinct musical advice as we're wrapping up here, what, what would that be? Sit down with your instrument every day for 
10 to minutes to a half hour and just play free, you know, after one, like just really, I mean, and, and I, again, this is going to be not a succinct, succinct <laughs> as maybe you want, but the reason is, is, I mean, to like really, even if you're not going to be an improviser, if that's not your goal is to be an improviser or a jazz player or whatever, to get that connection to your instrument, you start to explore it, you know, the possibilities, the sound possibilities that it have. When you, when you try to yourself express something that's say like, okay, I'm going to play whatever this, whatever I'm feeling right now, or I'm going to play what I was feeling last night. I'm going to play this dream I had. I'm going to play, you know, a car crash. I'm going to play my dog running across the yard to start to put these things into motion in music as something that you are expressing. And especially if you can record it and listen to it, you know, which is so easy these days, you start to see like, you know, how, what you're playing is how and, and how it is and whether or not it is expressing what it is you're trying to express, you know? And for me, what that's about is it's about each of us creating our own connection to these chords, to these notes, to these scales, not just doing not playing them the, because somebody else played them that way. Cause then that's that, that they were, they were just playing their expressions. Like, Oh, I'm going to play, you know, this guy's lick or this guy's chord or this guy's solo or this guy's line, you know? Um, but to really like, you know, and again, like when I say it's play free, it doesn't mean aleatoric or I mean, it's free to do anything you want, you know? So it could be sweet. It could be beautiful. It could be complex. It could be so many things, you know, thunderstorm, you know, I just, you know, I would say, you know, just, you on your instrument just play all kinds of things and just as a way to explore and it really is a way to connect so that when you are playing even if you're playing someone else's music you know you have a personal relationship to these notes and to these chords and where they fall in time you know and i don't know you know so that it's yours you know john That's man, so great to talk with you mike yeah, drop you too. This is Thank a badass you. weird music Thank podcast, Saint Disruption coming out soon. And uh, yeah, John, we'll be, uh, we'll be keeping tabs on what you've got coming out and, and look forward to hopefully having you back here uh, maybe later this year. Great, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Nice talking to you. You made it this far. Thank you for listening. And a big thank you to our sponsors, Hemp Relief CBD SEM Tickets, Devil Wind Brewing, and Artillery Productions. We've got links in the description below. Go check out all the awesome stuff they've got going on. And yeah, much love, everyone.